So here's some things that you might want to discuss. How do these factors influence what structure is appropriate and what will reproduce churches in your location? Their social and cultural factors. How, how comfortable are people meeting in private homes? Some people live in places where the homes are so small it would be very difficult to meet in homes or they have a very private uh, uh, attitude towards their homes. Is there persecution? Is there freedom? We've mentioned that in places where the church is persecuted and highly restricted, very often they have no choice but to develop house church type systems. Is there affluence or is there poverty? If there's a lot of poverty, it, you're probably not going to get to the point to where you have a self-sustaining movement where you're building buildings and having hired staff. You're probably not going to do that traditional church model very well. You're probably going to have to have some sort of more grassroots movement that has very simple church structures that would be somewhere towards more of the house church mode. What is the availability of affordable meeting places? This is an enormous problem in big urban centers where a church couldn't even dream of buying property. The best you might do is, would be to rent space, maybe in an office building or a warehouse or something. But even that can be very, very expensive. And so uh, that becomes also another bottleneck, a, a difficulty in reproducing churches. And so if you're in a situation like that, you may have to put more and more emphasis on meeting in homes meeting in uh, public spaces that can be rented on an hourly basis or alternatives so that you're not blocked by not being able to purchase or rent expensive real estate. What is the avail availability of qualified ministry professionals? In some places like the United States, we have lots of seminary graduates, people with graduate degrees in theology and ministerial training. They're looking for jobs. Some places you don't have that many people like that. You may not have any. You may not even have a seminary in some parts of the world. And so you're going to have to, to shift the emphasis, how do we equip ordinary people, lay people, to be able to give leadership to a movement? And what are the expectations and perceptions of unbelievers? Sometimes it has been said, well, if we, if we don't have a building People will assume we're just temporary, we're, we won't last, we'll be here today, gone tomorrow. Uh, or if you meet in a home, you're a sect, you're some sort of a dangerous, strange cult or something. And that's to be taken seriously. Um, sometimes if you live in a, and work in a very professional society where everybody is well trained for their jobs, there's an expectation that ministry is done in a very professional, well trained fashion. That plays a role. I don't think it has to be a limitation, but you do have to consider it. And then if you're in partnership with other churches, what are the expectations there? If you're working within a denominational structure, does that denominational structure allow the empowerment of lay people? Some denominations would say, well, lay person cannot baptize or serve communion, it has to be an ordained pastor. And that would limit the ability to have highly decentralized cell churches that are that are baptizing and, and serving communion. Um, what are the, their expectations in terms of training for ministry? Is there openness to lay people uh, taking leadership and so on? So these are some of the things that need to be considered. Now, this is technically not a course on uh, church dynamics or ecclesiology. I've spent a lot of time describing different structures of the church. So how does this then all relate to the desired church structure? How does that impact your church planting method? Well, let's just take the two scenarios. The one would be more growing grassroots home groups. So you're not using a lot of programs, but we're going to start more of a house church type of movement. The other is more of the uh, trying to launch the church with larger programs, uh, a more traditionally structured approach. Terminology that's sometimes used here is, is a launch large terminology that says we want to go and we want to start with a large number of people. We want to have a big program or a, a big service, start with big services, 
make that attractive, make the, make the worship dynamic. You've got a good music team. And so you can invite people to those meetings and they feel comfortable. The other is what I said, the sort of the grassroots, the grow the grassroots, sometimes called a more missional approach. It's highly relational where you're just, you're, you're just building relationships and meeting in homes and you're starting out that way. So what are some of the differences in the method? Well, the structure of the one is a more traditional, the other is more house church. Some of the models that you've heard about are Willow Creek Church, uh, one of the largest churches in America, or Purpose Driven, Rick Warren. Uh, these are what we would call sort of attractional churches that have big programs. Or the more grassroots version is what Neil Cole has called organic churches. Some have called it simple churches, minimal structure, house church, or church planting movements that David Garrison describes. These again are largely house churches lay-led small movements, you grow them from the grassroots up. You don't have big programs and big events that you invite people to. So the focus on the launch large sort of approach is get that big dynamic worship service that you would invite people to. And that may be an evangelistic opportunity to lead those people to Christ. The other is says, no, 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 don't do those big events. Most people nowadays don't go to those anyway and and so just start with highly relational small groups. You invite your neighbors over for tea. You enter spiritual conversation. You invite them maybe to do Bible study. You start at the small, uh, small group level, and then you build from there out. The location, of course, if you're going to launch large, you're going to have to rent a public space. That's going to have to be a, a place that's accessible for people, whether they use public transportation, uh, whether they walk there. Do they know the address? Is it hidden in some back alley somewhere? Or is it in a place where they can find it easily? Because you're trying to reach a lot of people. If you're growing grassroots, well, you just meet in homes. You meet in small local venues. If you're launching large, evangelism is, as we said, attractional. So you try and have topics or events that people would be interested in. Uh, concerts. Uh, talks on maybe child rearing. I heard of one church that uh, attracted people by having talks on um, potty training for children. Uh, there were a lot of young parents and uh, this was a question that the mothers had and so they, they tried that. So you invite people to events. Uh, the, the other is called incarnational. You just build relationships and friendships. You try and live out the gospel, acts of kindness, and then look for opportunities to share the gospel that way. Discipleship, uh, the so-called purpose-driven Rick Warren approach is you draw the crowd, so you may get a lot of people attending these events. A lot of people are attending the worship service. Many of them may not be believers. So what you then do is out of those people who are coming, you begin to work with those who seem spiritually open and then lead them to Christ Hopefully they become disciples, and then they become the spiritual core of the church. But you're starting out with potentially a large number of unbelievers. Now, if you're doing the grassroots approach, you're starting from the core and you're growing outward. So instead of a large group growing spiritually inward, you're starting with a small group and you're leading people to Christ. And so you're growing it from more of a spiritual center out. So ministry in the launch large approach is more program oriented because you're attracting people to programs. The grassroots is more relationally oriented. Leadership in the launch large is gonna be more the pastoral church planner. You've got trained staff, you usually have, you may have a, a, a musician who's a very, very accomplished musician to be that worship leader because you really want that to be an inspiring, well done event. Whereas the grassroots approach is much more apostolic. Uh, you're, you're having lay people because it's relational. You don't need fancy musicians to have a little worship time in a home group. The governance of the launch large is largely centralized and planned. You have to plan these events. You have a, a group of leaders that are taking responsibility for planning the programs. The more grassroots version is more spontaneous because you grow it as the people come. You grow it with the people who God gives you. 
It's decentralized. So you may start another group here, another small group there. The concept of the spider and the starfish, you may have heard of this, that the spider, is, to kill the spider, if you cut the head off a spider, the spider dies, right? Because all its central organisms are in the center of the body. The starfish, on the other hand, if you cut off one of the, the legs of a starfish, that will grow into another starfish. It doesn't kill it. And so the idea is with the sort of the more grassroots cell organ, it's like the starfish, you just, you cut off pieces of it and then it will grow into another cell group, another little home church. Whereas the other is much more centrally organized like that spider who has a central nervous system and the legs go out from there. So launching large is gonna be an emphasis on high quality, on excellence. So if you go to these conferences that groups like Willow Creek put on, they have a big emphasis on excellence. Do it well. This honors God and it's attractive to the people you're trying to reach. The grassroots, the emphasis is on empowerment and mobilizing ordinary people. The cost of launching large is expensive. Some groups will say, well, you've got to hire staff to, to launch it. You've got to have uh, You've got to have PowerPoint projectors and screens to have that worship experience. Um, you've got to rent rooms where you're going to have this. You're going to have advertising where you're going to invite people to the events and so on and so forth. So it's costly. The grassroots approach doesn't cost much money because it's all relational. Growth with the launch large approach is usually faster in the short term because you're attracting larger numbers of people. Whereas a lot of those people may be Christians who are already attending another church and they're attracted to your church because you've got the better program. So sometimes those kind of attractional approaches get a lot of Christians from other churches. Whereas the grassroots approach, the growth may be slower at least in the beginning because you don't, you're not attracting large numbers but your growth is gonna be largely conversion growth because you're reaching more non-Christians. TBS Seminary is a nonprofit project. Our joint effort will bring about the common purpose of making Christian education available around the world and developing good Christian servant leaders. You have a unique opportunity to partner in this effort through your prayer and or financial support of TBS Ministry. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com. The goal with the Launch Large is to grow that church to a point that you can sustain these programs without having a lot of external finances to, 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 to keep it going and then somehow reproduce it. Whereas the goal with the grassroots approach is just keep reproducing these small groups. You keep reproducing them. So reproduction with the launch large is difficult because it's so expensive and because it requires so many resources and professionality and so on. Reproduction is much easier with the grassroots because it's smaller and doesn't demand the high resources. Now the stability, sort of like our elephant, is much stronger with the launch large once it gets going because you've got a critical mass, you've got a larger number of people, but it's less flexible. Whereas the grassroots approach, stability is low because they're just small groups and all it takes is one or two families to leave or have a conflict and that may threaten it. But it's much more flexible and as we said, persecution resistance. And so the vulnerability of the launch large is to be very institutional. You're so geared into programs, you're so geared into uh, trying to attract people that can lead to sort of a consumer mentality. In some places where you have several of these kind of churches, you've got Christians who go to one church, and then, then they don't like the programs, and the better program is at this church, and then they switch and go to that church, and you get sort of a, you don't have a, a local commitment to the local church. People are looking for the better programs. And of course, it's vulnerable to persecution, as we've said. The weakness or the vulnerability of the grassroots movement is the weak leadership because you're mainly a lay-led group 
then how strong are those lay leaders really? And uh, how about those strong personalities that can dominate a small group and make it unhealthy? And so I'm not suggesting that one is right, the other is wrong. They're just very, very different approaches. The one heading more towards program and a more traditional sort of church structure, the other one much more grassroots and sort of a, a house church type of structure. Now, again, these can be networked and they can grow into sort of a cell celebration. They're just very, very different approaches. And so really the questions for application to this unit are, what church structure is most common in your context? Well, in some parts of the world, again, if you're working in the persecuted church, probably going to be more house church, decentralized sorts of churches. If you're working in more traditional places where the parish system is known, then you might have the more traditional church. But do you think that other structures might be better suited for your context? Why or why not? Why wouldn't maybe a house church system work where you are? Or why wouldn't maybe a more attractional approach work where you are? You know, sometimes God chooses to bless both approaches in the same place. Or, a, or this more hybrid type approach with the self celebration. So you may want to think about that. What is God leading you? There's many books written by people advocating these different kinds of approaches. And you may want to study more about an approach that you're less familiar with. 